Who would you rather take health advice from? This weirdo? Yeah. Or these stallions? Look how studly they are. But look how weird that is. But studly. Weird. Studly. The doctor. The, the doctor who believes in science. Every time. I do not care what the doctor looks like. Yeah, it's not not one of those things where I'm like, oof, I can only really truly test a doctor that makes me feel all fuzzy inside. Gives me the warms, you know? I'm like, ooh, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a doctor. That's a movie doctor right there, you know? Cool. Yeah, no, no, I don't need to look at your credentials at all. Let's just, uh, let's just start this thing. Let's start on this freak show. <laughs> And they want it all to be a conspiracy. There's been an amazing medical innovation in, in human culture, and that's vaccines. I was concerned because he was starting to invite some pretty hard-hitting anti-vaccine types on his show. What the hell is going on? Is what I asked myself after reading all of the online discourse this weekend and into today over podcaster Joe Rogan. Democratic primary candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and scientist Peter Hotez. So I'm going to break this down and we're going to try to come to some kind of conclusion here over whether or not a scientist should debate a effing lunatic. So it all starts with this story. Advice. <laughs> it is a question we all ask ourselves and that's how we'll prove if science is real, by the way. This actually really starts with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. going on Joe Rogan's show for a three-hour conversation of madness. But this piece in Vice came out of it saying Spotify has stopped even sort of trying to stem Joe Rogan's... Why? 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 If things got worse, like you... <laughs> Sam Cedar put this so well, where it's like they are passing the cost of their activities onto the consumers. Essentially, if you had a company that was polluting so badly that it was poisoning the water or the, the air and everyone around them in a small town was suddenly poisoned with that and that that was resulting in potentially people dying, then that should not be a cost that the uh, company just gets to get away with, right? That's why you have environmental protection agencies, things of that nature. Now, this is a completely different field of medium. So, yes, you can have a one-to-one -one comparison, but you can certainly take into the effect that, hey, if 11 million people listen to Joe Rogan, of those 11 million people, there's going to be a small percentage. And I think the percentage of people who are vaccinated in his audience is only 27%. So anyways, of that, there's going to be a percentage who don't get vaccinated because of the things that Joe Rogan's guests uh, say. If he has uh, anti-vaxxers who are on there and they're like, oh yes, it'll turn your brain to goo. And someone's like, well, I don't want that. I like my brain. I'd prefer it not to be goo. Again, it's, it's like, it's so cartoonishly absurd Considering we're years, years into people using the COVID vaccine, there's been billions of doses given out. If this was something where human beings were spontaneously going to combust into piles of fucking cum or something like that, it would have already happened. You'd see it everywhere. The, the fucking, there would be goo lining the streets. This is nonsense. We, 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 we don't need to keep platforming these people who are so objectively wrong and saying that like, well, is there no merit in debate? Do you not understand? Why won't you debate? Vaccine misinformation. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a big anti-vax guy, going back even well before COVID, as a recent conversation between the podcast host and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. makes clear, and this is a piece by uh, Anna Merlin. Now, just a quick summary here, since it is a three-hour conversation. Joe Rogan, the biggest podcaster in the country, hosted a three-hour conversation with RFK Jr., the anti-vax luminary turned presidential candidate. The conversation was an orgy of unchecked vaccine misinformation, some conspiracy mongering about 5G technology and Wi-Fi, which apparently melts your brain. Yes, he believes that. And of course, Rogan once again praising ivermectin, an ineffective uh, faux COVID treatment. So there's a lot more, of course. There was conversations about vaccines and autism, even though this has been debunked countless times, in case you want information on that and are dealing with anybody in your life who believes this garbage. Uh, two studies have been cited by those claiming that MMR, MMR vaccine causes autism. Both studies are critically flawed, so I'll link to this below the video under sources. There's also a great piece here from Naomi Klein. This came out last week. Beware, we ignore Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s candidacy at our peril, uh, where she goes on to completely debunk all his anti-vax garbage. And this line was the beginning of it, but there's many paragraphs on it. But uh, she writes here, Kennedy is right that something changed in the world of autism at the start of the 90s. Just completely wrong about what? What changed was the medical definition of autism. So I don't want to go too deep on this because this isn't the part of the video. This isn't the point of the video. 
But essentially, um, they changed the definition of what autism was, meaning more people were included in that definition, which led to this massive spike in people that in kids that have autism. So and there's more to it as well. That's one that's one aspect of it. But anyways, again, I'll link to that below. Also, uh, on June 5th, on Jordan Peterson's show, the Democratic candidate, RFK Jr., told a controversial media commentator that he thought the sexual dysphoria, which he meant gender dysphoria, this guy is such uh. a, a expert in these fields he espouses about that he doesn't even use the right terminology. The sexual dysphoria. Sexual dysphoria. Interesting. Wow. Dysphoria seen in okay. children, particularly boys, was because they were swimming through a soup of toxic chemicals. Blaming people that are trans on okay so if you think that's a mischaracterization of what was said um i think i have yeah here i've here. seen the climate apocalypse use fear to induce something ap approximating the same kind of level of tyranny as far as i'm concerned that characterized the the vaccine lockdown help me sort that out and, and understand where you stand i see the, these huge levels of depression and despair uh, loneliness in kids and i don't think that there's a single cause to it um and i think blaming it on you know depression about climate is probably over simplistic and in fact i think a lot of them like you're only correct in so far that it is going to have a multitude of different reasons. There's obviously going to be a lot of reasons why there are very high rates of depression, anxiety. I mean, lots of it can have to do with, say, social media, for example, and the way that AI is dominating our thought process. Yes, that can have a very detrimental effect. And also the reinforcement of unrealistic standards, which obviously for children or for teenagers is very, very detrimental as well. There is also existential threats because it doesn't seem like the adults who are in control of everything are in control of anything. That's, that's got to be scary as fuck because, hey, for me, an adult, you know, I'm fucking, I'm closer to 40 than I am to 30. For me, an adult, uh, I I am scared shitless of that. So I can't imagine what it's like to be a young person, you know, who's also just like, so the, why why aren't they stopping this? Like, we, we know that we're all fucked if we keep doing this thing, right? And then it's like, well, yeah, yeah, we do know that. And we've known for a long time. Oh, well, yeah, we've had a lot of opportunities to kind of change course and then change this whole weird, you know, ride that we're on. Let's just say that. So can we do something about it? Uh, but money. Money. <laughs> Well, more money. <laughs> we, need, we need more money. So so we're going to keep doing that for the money. But it, it, it just kind of seems if we didn't have society or civilization, then money would have no value or meaning. And we would basically just be trying to survive, right? So so the very basis of money and actually having value, like achieving endless money when it is something we made up, it's, it's not a, it's like, it's not, it's not real. It can't, it can't feed us technically. I mean, I know you could say you could buy food with it, but like when, when the money has no value, we, we can't eat the money. What are we going to do then? Problems we see in kids, and particularly boys, it's probably underappreciated um, that uh, how much of that is coming from chemical exposures, including a lot of the sexual dysphoria that we're seeing. They, I mean, they're swimming. So I thought it was wild when I heard Tim Pool try to bust this one out. Tim Pool's kind of doing the entire, like, they're both kind of spins on Alex Jones, right? And it's like, there is elements of what Alex Jones is saying that is very, very small, but a, like a small amount of it is based on, he takes a jumping off point, which is that, yes, look, this is observable in frogs when exposed to this certain specific chemical that this can actually change characteristics of the frogs and when given extremely high doses of this chemical once again, right? Take that, extrapolate it, and then run all the way to, like, they're putting this chemical in the water to turn us gay, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, Tim Pool was suggesting that it was microplastics. He was he was like it's microplastics, and because of all the microplastics, that's why you're seeing an increase in trans people and people who are experiencing gender dysphoria. And like to all these clowns uh, and these bigoted clowns, I'm going to add by the way, trans people have always existed. Like so many of you need to get on board. Like I I get it because like hey again ten years ago I would not know half the stuff I know now. But like once you figure it fucking out and you start looking at it, and you're like oh wow there's 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 cultures that have been uncolonized or they were pre-colonization that had language for trans people that had nothing to do with Western civilization absolutely nothing. Look at the fucking the Samoa Fafafine like this the Fafafine and Samoa are. People who are identified as men, this is almost exclusively, they're identified as men at birth, all right, uh, but they do not think of themselves as men, they think of themselves as a third gender, that third gender is known as the Fafafine, and they compete with other cis women for uh, heterosexual cis men, 
they are that's the that's who they sexually pursue so they try to look and dress as women but they do not consider themselves women women do not consider themselves women women know of them as the third gender the fafafine but again it's like all of this just exists within the human experience you, you just keep seeing this appear like in india there there's a, words for other genders right like it's, it's just like th this is not like a new phenomenon that just came along with credit cards it's like, oh yeah, we got credit cards, but then when you throw the credit card out, you, you cut it up a bit, right? And, and then you drink the, the, the water, you know, the Evian or whatever, you throw it in the garbage. That garbage then piles up, and then some of it goes into the ocean, especially as it's being transported on barges or stuff like that. And once, once in the ocean, it just breaks up into microplastics, and then that gets back into our water supply, and that's how trans people exist. Yeah. Science is whatever you want it to be at any given time. It's quite miraculous like that. Useful too. Being through a soup of toxic chemicals today, and many of those are endocrine disruptors. There's atrazine throughout our water supply. Atrazine, by the way, if you in a lab put atrazine in a tank full of frogs, it will chemically castrate and for forcibly feminize every frog in there. And 10% of the frogs, the male frogs, will uh, will turn into fully viable females able to produce viable eggs. If it's doing that to frogs, Hell yeah. it could. Re it, there's a lot of other evidence that it's doing it to human beings as well. We are essentially the exact same creature in every single way. There's no differences between the two. And obviously large quantities that affect the uh, an animal of that size would uh, have the same effects on, on human beings. I mean, that's, again, just science, whatever you want it to be. Thanks, RFK Jr. The dude is a fucking quack. Like, like... He should, like, I saw, there's a handful of the, like, at this point, they're the weirdo left. There's a handful of the weirdo left online, like, this is why they're trying to silence RFK. They, they, he knows too much. So, yeah, the dude is a quack, uh, should not be taken seriously by anyone, seriously. Um, to the fucking uh, weirdo left, the clown shoes left, and the fucking, the synthetic left, the red fash left, the red brown alliance left, all these weird ass fucking <laughs> deeply unserious people online who just call everyone they don't like a fucking shit limb. Um... Why are you granting this man so much presence? Why are you saying that he's trying to be silenced? Why are you trying to make it out like there's some kind of deep state conspiracy? There's, the only thing that's going on here is a massive weirdo getting a lot more camera time than he definitely should. Definitely should. I would not know half of what I do about RFK Jr. And I'm worse for it. It's, it's not making my life better to know more and more about this man. In fact, if anything, it's making my life decidedly worse. Chemicals in the water. Yep. I have, and this is, I can't show the clip. YouTube actually pulled the video down because it's such garbage. Nice. Before, because they are free to, because there is less stigma within their social circles about it. So the history of left-handedness, rate of left-handedness among Americans, year of birth. Do you think, what, the chemicals in the water turned people left-handed in the 1940s? The eh, 50s? Maybe. No. Maybe. Yeah. There was like, there's a lot of like laudanum, opium, stuff like that. That was probably moving around, right? That probably, that probably lowered the left hand in this a little bit. Why not? You know, we could just make up whatever we want and say it, apparently, if you were on the right or if you're in the fucking grifting left. Doesn't matter. You just get to do whatever you want. It's, it's, it's easy and fun. It's because Great for society. it was no longer seen as some work of the devil. People were allowed to just be left-handed. We're seeing that now with people. So here's a little bit more on left-handedness. I think you may be oversold what happened with left-handed folks, though I think the actual history is even more instructive to your point. You aren't wrong that folks thought left-handed was evil, unlucky, or sinister. But if you read the history of left-handedness, it's more of a history of erasure and denial than one of persecution. That is, it wasn't so much that people thought being left-handed made you evil, but rather that people had no real concept of handedness. And everyone uh, used, the majority of people used their right hand for everything from wiping, I think, to using your left hand for anything other was odd and rude and maybe even threatening. Uh, I bring this all up because I think it's an even more powerful statement. Hold on, this goes in one of any ways. Uh, we are seeing the assistant trans folk are different kinds of people, uh, like tall and short, brown-eyed, and blue-eyed. While conservatives claim that trans people are wrong, they might even acknowledge that some number of people are basically are trans, but they cannot conceive in transitioning as a treatment because it isn't, quote, curing them, and the only acceptable treatment for trans folks is to, quote, cure them because they are being they think being trans is wrong. But why they did turn to it and why people had delusions may be indulged or not by society and then were responding to an aberration by normalizing it instead of fixing it. I bring this because it's an even more powerful statement, one that cuts closer to the core of the conservative project. It's not just about stopping discriminating against left-handed folks, we stopped assuming that individual children were simply making mistakes with which hand to write with while affirming all their kids' uh, use of their naturally dominant hand. And they should make a category for people exist when you stop treating it as a mistake to be corrected and the category then grows. Lower trans.
this gets us to this. So I missed something. Are we seeing the chemicals in the water created gay people? So basically, right now, there's multiple individuals, Alex Jones, RFK Jr., Tim Poole, who believe that there is some evidence within simply their own feelings and observation that a chemical, whether it's microplastics or chemicals like, I don't think anyone said fluoride, but, you know, the Thorazine, I think, is the one that they always refer to. Um, they're using chemicals and or because there's a high presence of just chemicals in our food supply and stuff like that, it is causing things like, yes, queer folk. It is what is creating queer folk, which is a, an incredibly bigoted and deeply, deeply unscientific way of looking at things as if somehow the existence of people who, again, have existed throughout human history and also exist within the rest of the animal kingdom, uh, you know, the, the, even animals that aren't touched by the Thorazine, um, is, is, uh, is not doing justice to the fact that, again, they've existed throughout history, you know? Uh, Professor Peter Hotez, who is a, an MD, uh, I'll get to one of his amazing uh, uh, works in a second here, but he tweets out that Vice article saying Spotify has stopped even sort of trying to stem Joe Rogan's vaccine misinformation. Why? It's Spotify, really true, why? just awful. And from all the online attacks I'm receiving after this absurd podcast, it's clear many actually believe this nonsense. So before I get to Rogan's response and some clips that uh, you might you may find enjoyable, this is a. Uh, Peter Hotez's work. So, from uh, obscurity to a Nobel Prize nomination, Houston scientists acclaimed for their patent free COVID 19 vaccine. I highlighted patent free here because some people in the Joe Rogan circle, maybe even Rogan himself, are trying to claim that um, Hotez is pushing big pharma nonsense. Big pharma. Just wait until they learn about gay penguins in Antarctica. Yeah, the gay penguins are super cute. Is anti Peter Hotez. They're against people like this because he made the vaccine free for the world. Big Pharma doesn't want that. Just to be clear about where Peter Hotez is on the, the Big Pharma spectrum. He worked within... This is so key to all this, by the way, because right now, if you look at the arguments that the right are using, and I'll pull up some of them. I was fucking responding to a couple of these clowns. Um, they're trying to do like a hot or not on this doctor. Like, I kid you not, there's people who are just straight up like, who do you trust to give you medical advice? This weirdo looking dude or these two hot studs? And and you're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> um, the, um, the choice between the conspiracy theorist, uh, the I podcast, and the, doc the doctor. But why is this, <laughs> why is this remotely controversial? I, I don't understand. Yeah, hold on, here it is. Who would you rather take health advice from? This weirdo? Yeah, or these stallions. Look how studly they are. But look how weird that is. But studly. Weird. Studly. The doctor. The, the doctor who believes in science. Every time. I do not care what the doctor looks like. Yeah, it's not not one of those things where I'm like, oof, I can only really truly test a doctor that makes me feel all fuzzy inside. Gives me the warms, you know? I'm like, ooh, yeah, that's a... Oh, that's a doctor. That's a movie doctor right there, you know? Cool. Yeah, no, no. I don't need to look at your credentials at all. Let's just uh, let's just start this thing. Uh, where he works, a, a university, to develop a patent-free vaccine. Generally speaking, a bad doctor is going to be better than a science nihilist. Yeah. Just generally speaking, anyone who has, like, uh, training, especially within uh, the field of medicine, and uh, also is willing to accept peer-reviewed studies is, is going to be probably better than a podcaster or a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Pharma is not making money. Like, does <laughs> didn't RFK Jr. write a book where he doesn't believe that, like, HIV causes AIDS? Like, <laughs> that's, like <laughs> that's so wild to me. That's so wild to me, because that's like, that's where people were kind of, yeah, we didn't truly know in, in like, you know, the late 80s. <laughs> but we've, we've come very far in our understanding, not to mention our ability to treat it. Yeah. <laughs> He's now, an HIV AIDS denier. This so, gets like, us to... Then opinion disregarded in every way, shape, and form. If you are stuck in like, you know, 1986 in your, your current understanding of something when there's such a breadth of information that has come since, then like, what do you have to teach us? I, I, I feel like you're just going to regress whenever you feel like it. Uh, Rogan's response. Because don't get me wrong, there are times when things weird me out, when there's new discoveries, especially scientific ones, like, this is how this works. And I'm like, oh, wow, I, I didn't think that's how, it, okay, but yeah, all right, I guess I need to accept it, otherwise it's kind of weird. I'm going to have to, you know, just turn off science. <laughs> awesome. 
where he says, Peter, if you claim what RFK Jr. is saying is misinformation, I am offering you $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you're willing to de debate him on my show with no time limit. Peter responds, saying, I'm happy to come on and clear the air. I respect you and your show. I don't want an adversarial, adversarial relationship. I think we can work well together. To which Rogan responds, saying, to those misunderstanding what he's saying, he's not agreeing to debate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He's just offering to come on my show himself. Yes, just like you had RFK Jr. on your show for three hours to talk bullshit. And by the way, like debunk the funk would go on there for like I know people are throwing money around right now. Tim Pool's throwing around something like I I don't know like close to a hundred thousand dollars I want to say, but like the the pot was growing and growing to like the conservatives had almost had like a million dollars worth of like come on we want to de destroy the scientist we must destroy the lab coat and I was like oh god it's gonna get to a certain point right I mean everyone's got a breaking point at a certain point everyone's gonna be like ooh this is quite a bit of money um. Debunk the funk would do it for free. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I'm I don't want to be. I, it's a little, uh, I guess, uh, uh, uncouth of me to just assume that. But like, he seems at least in my conversations with him anyway, he seems pretty dedicated to just wanting to debunk again and dismantle a lot of these pseudo scientific lies. And I mean, this is a molecular biologist, so he's going to be able to he's going to be able to hold his own uh, in, in in this uh, arena. But everyone I've also seen him challenge already, like he, Dr. Drew, even Dr. Drew came off looking like a fool, you know, because uh, the guy knows his shit. So, yes, please uh, have him on. Show. Bring him, bring him on your show. I, I would love to see that. Uh, Tim, bring him on your show too. Would love to see that. Just, just to have someone who can just effectively, like, put a, a period and a sentence end to every one of their statements. Where when I, whenever they say something just like clownish or, or clearly not based in reality, well, you know, we we have uh, wondered about uh, how many people are just experiencing like celebrities, uh, spontaneous myocarditis as a result of uh, the vaccine. Like, you know, he can answer that so quickly with, with a much better um, fucking. Much more uh, scientific and eloquent a uh, response than I ever could. You won't have Peter Hotez? Sam Schneider wants to go on their shows too. Well, Tim Pool won't host anyone who doesn't physically go to his compound. You know, he's kind of, he's like Michael Jackson style that way. Um... I don't know if Sam Cedar's gonna. I don't know if Sam Cedar's gonna fly down to the compound. Uh, he'd probably go see Joe Rogan. Uh, I don't know. Is, is, is Joe Rogan? Un, is he an unvaccinated? Like little. He looks like his. I feel like his sets in like a tube. It feels almost like like a cylinder, or, or maybe it's in like you know like some kind of an RV on, on top of like a mountain or something. I mean, like I have no idea where it's located. Yeah. He's on to refute that stuff by himself for three hours. I think Kim officially banned Sam Cedar. He did talk a ton of shit about Sam Cedar. That was wild. I was just like, why, why are you going off about Sam Cedar so much? Unprovoked, too. I wasn't like, hey, Tim, tell me what you really think about that Sam Cedar guy. Now, Hotez has been on Rogan's show before. Twice, actually. So he discusses that here, Peter Dominic here, with a great uh, discussion with Peter Hotez. And I'll link to his podcast below this video as well, in case you want to listen to this entire discussion. But here is a clip where Hotez is discussing his recent interactions or hmm. lack thereof with Joe Rogan until recently. Stop returning his he messages. He would have you on because you are a respected, credible voice. And I'm not sure how much he challenged you at that point. But after when COVID began and he started trafficking in some of these conspiracy theories and having doubts and all of that, you contacted Joe via email, via DM on Twitter. You guys. I didn't see this yet. Damn. What do you fucking know? How about that? Don't see Joe Rogan tweeting out about this. Just straight up doing debate beat bro attack. Why does this always happen? This happens at this scale? This is the highest fucking, this is the shit that happens to me on Twitch where this shit is clown shoes. It should be like, this is a deeply unserious space, okay? I just want to be completely clear about that. I think I've been very transparent about that my entire career, all right? I am a, I am an entertainer, I'm a comedian, and I enjoy being a comedian, making people laugh. But this shit happens to me. I'll DM people, you know, on the same level as me and shit, and then get this kind of like, oh yeah, totally, I agree with you, Lance. And then like later on, it's like, yo, why won't surfs debate? Needs to debate in the blurry blur of the blah blah. blah. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, no, but dude, come on. In, in DMs, we we were all cash. Now things are getting wild. So apparently, that's happening at the highest levels now with the biggest podcast in the world, Joe Rogan, and this an actual fucking scientist where he's just like, hey, I've been on your show a couple times, Joe. Just want to let you know, um, what you are being told by this person, this RFK Jr., is deeply uh, incorrect, unscientific, and the uh, broad consensus of the scientific community, we're talking over ninety eight percent, would care uh, like 
like categorically uh, oppose and disagree with almost everything that they're promoting right now. So you, you might want to track some things, you know, just please. Had had correspondence before and Content he never replied true. to you. Is that correct? Well, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I was. It's also, it's like, it's a forced feedback, right? Like, you know, as much as you want to be honest and normal, it's really hard on the internet because it's just like, it's not normal to have these degrees of like interaction and, and interactivity. And as we scale up, you get someone like Joe Rogan. That's 11 million human beings who listen to him. That's a country. That's, that, that's larger than the population of a lot of countries in the world that, that listens to one human being speak. Like every single week, you, like again, it's it's very hard to wrap your head around that. I certainly couldn't. I couldn't imagine a country, a whole country, listening to me every single time I did a fucking podcast, where half the time I'm talking about fucking uh, having sex with aliens. Like that's that's the majority of Joe Rogan's content. But like a country listens to him fucking wax on about how much he wants to fuck aliens and, and DMT and all this other shit, and, and then we'll occasionally have these fucking transphobic losers on there who again are being listened to by a country. Like it's it's, it's not normal. I was on twice on, I don't know if it was called the Joe Rogan experience or what, but when back when he was in LA before he moved yeah. it to Austin. And, um, and what's that? Pre-COVID. Well, once was pre-COVID, once was as COVID was, was oh. getting underway. Okay. And, um, you know, he could be challenging and, and, you know, there, I, you know, I can't say it was totally smooth, but it was, it was reasonable. And I thought it was a very good discussion. Again, how, we're making vaccines, you know, out of the out of the pharma sector, doing this nonprofit, Good. making vaccines for the world. And and then afterwards, he came to Houston for his uh, comedy show in the Toyota Center. And and I got I went backstage with my my youngest son and we hung out, had a beer. You know, it was it was <laughs> fun, you know, and I, I you know, I, I mean, I even thought of him as sort of a, a friend of sorts. And and oh, no. up your room. Oh, tyrannical Rex! Thank you. Wow, that was whiplash. I went to the the sadness of hearing this poor scientist uh, think that this was a bromance, only to be rejected. Uh, but then I got the uh, the uh, the sub, so the sub did help. That dopamine reset uh, receiving. I was like, oh, nice. And now we're back. Oh, here we go. But that's sad. That's sad. He's like, yeah, we went backstage. You know, we got to meet my son. I was like, yo, this is Joe Rogan. Son was probably like, this is super cool. Like, I imagine probably younger crowds love Joe Rogan because of the fucking the UFC stuff, which is probably, in my opinion, the good side of Joe Rogan. Like, if he's off doing UFC, I'm like, we're great. If he's just avoiding, you know, politics, politics. If he can just stick to, well, even in sports politics, he kind of sucks. So maybe if he just didn't do anything other than commentate, commentate. He's a great commentator on UFC fights. You know, he's a good announcer, good, good talky, good talky person, way better than I would be. I don't know half the stuff that's going on. I just watched two men, you know, get all sweaty and roll around on each other. Um, but yeah, that's sad. And then when COVID really started getting bad, I wanted to. I nah, sorry, he's a ghoul. Yeah. Him a couple of times, several times in 2020. I mean, to be honest with you, it's one of those things where yeah, I'm being really nice because I think Peter Hotez right now, he's getting it hard. Okay. He's, he's having weirdo show up at his house, filming him, straight up filming him, you know, and then be like, hey, Peter, oh, yeah, I just want to talk to you about that, that Jew Rogan podcast. Yeah. So uh, you going to beat him or are you a coward? Are you ready for the marketplace of ideas, bro? You're going to tap out, sponsored by Tap Out. And I'm like, oh, damn, that's funny. Like, that sucks. Just especially if you're like, you're a well, you're a well meaning person who's fighting, uh, you know, vaccine hesit uh, hesitancy and, and, you know, anti scientific rhetoric being promoted through the internet and algorithms. Like, that sucks. That sucks. Um, you should know that Joe Rogan's a piece of shit at this point, though. Like, I mean, take your pick. What's what's worse to you? Did you want the extreme racism or the extreme transphobia, the extreme misogyny, the xenophobia? Like, you take your pick. The dude's dude's pretty shit. Yeah. So I, I like I, I at this point I would definitely try and like if you had the ability to contact Joe Rogan for sure try and influence him try and steer him in a different direction trying to just be like you know this shit is not uh, not great but uh, at the same time know that he's a massive 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 piece of shit. Twenty one, and then no response and once more in twenty twenty two want to talk about our vaccines and again how we're bypassing the pharma sector and also I was concerned because he was starting to invite some pretty hard-hitting anti-vaccine types on his show and and oh yeah and as that delta wave was starting to roll through the south through the southern states and my state of texas you were seeing all these unvaccinated texans and my neighbors losing their lives because they believe the anti-vaccine disinformation i wanted to come on and you know tell people to get their their vaccines but at that time he didn't respond
So Joe Rogan is so committed to showing wow. the reality, showing what you the facts, the truth, shit. that he ignored what a piece of an shit. actual anti-Big Pharma scientist that developed a patent-free vaccine. He ignored this guy, Peter Hotez, for two years after already having him on a show for a, a couple of times. So it, this isn't some like random person being like, hey, Joe, have me on your show. No, he, these guys know each other. Hmm. He ignored him for two years during hmm. the height of Rogan's misinformation around COVID and vaccines. That sounds to me um, like someone doing something that they wanted to willfully. Like that sounds to me that Joe Rogan had gone down his own personal journey of discovery, which was just loaded with zinc and horse paste and, you know, all, all this and monoclonal antibodies being, I think, the only one that was actually remotely effective at actually treating people who had COVID before we actually had things like very, very effective and safe vaccines. But man, it sucks. It just fucking sucks, you know? It sucks that, like, the debate bros are taking this whole thing over, too. We got Joe Rogan to straight, like, and again, I am not someone who hates watching debate. I enjoy it, but I just, I know what it is. It's entertainment. I don't think actual credible scientists should be debating what the vast majority of the scientific, uh, you know, consensus already agrees upon. We, as people who are going to be, like, if they can make predictions, if they can actually state things, like, hey, this is going to most likely lower hospitalization by up to 60 or 70 percent. Hey, this is going to lower the amount of people who die from this from up to, you know, 60 or 70 percent. Hey, this is going to lower the amount of people who even get sick from this from up to 60 or 70 percent, 80 percent in this case 90 percent here and then all of a sudden millions millions and millions of people take it and they have that they experience that and then like fucking all the things they also said that were going to happen like yes with any medication taken on a large scale there will be people who experience complications some people could have myocarditis some people could have cardiac arrest some people could have strokes they will be in much lower percentages than those who if not vaccinated general population gets exposed to covid in general and we saw that we, we saw the vaccinated and their rates of fucking Hospitalization, symptoms, death, plummet. You, you could, you just see it in the numbers. So it's one of those things where it's like, do you believe your eyes? Do you believe the things you see before you? And, and like, you, you need to listen and watch cartoons on the other direction. You need to watch, like, they did the fucking ice bucket challenge of having uh, fake seizures. It's so many right wingers. You know, if they, if they, like, like a lot of right wingers, a lot of fucking like Christian moms and shit, all just doing this kind of like, yeah, did the vaccine once, can't stop the shakes now. And then everyone is like watching, just like, that's not a known side effect of the vaccine in any way, shape, or form. It's like, you're. You're making that up. I mean, at best, at best, this this could be some kind of like, you know, this is psychosomatic. Like this is something in which the mind is convincing the body and it's having manifestations in the real world. But that's even pretty unlikely. Like most likely you've seen other people do this on the internet and now it's a trend. You know, like when I got to that one lady with the beer where she was like, she was like this. And then like at the same time, kept looking at the camera. She's like, oh, uh, does it look good? And you're like, Jesus Christ, what? Why are you all faking having serious problems when this vaccine is so well known to be safe at this point? Billions with a B, billions of doses have been given out. Billions. If, if it turned us into goo, it, we would be all goo at this point. You know, I think I'm like four deep. I'm fine. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Yet now wants to have him on to debate a lunatic. So on that debate, here is uh, Mehdi Hassan, and he wrote, just wrote a book on debating. This is his feet. Like he's oh, nice. I want to see this. I heard this was a good clip. From conspiracy nuts on social media. Because it is never a good idea for an award-winning, world-renowned, peer-reviewed vaccine scientist or an actual expert in any academic field to debate an unhinged crank who... See, like, if it's just the idea that people have kind of tried to compare, like, academic debates to the very idea of how the scientific method works, like, there is debate within science. You are actually trying to disprove a thesis. That's the entire purpose of the scientific method. You come up with a concept, a thesis, and then you want to disprove that thesis, and you want to use, again, double-blind testing so you cannot influence your own test, and then you want it to be peer-reviewed by your peers, respected journalists and peers, in order to understand whether or not you did this correctly. And if so, then you want it to be replicated by someone else who does it in an entirely different setting, somewhere else in the world, another country perhaps, a different demographic. And then if you see the same results being replicated again and again and again, you can start to say with certainty, I think by Jove, we got it. 
I think so. Here we go. This is a much better system that is producing results in which we trust in doctors in a lot of ways to give us life-saving medication and medicines, which has allowed us to extend, in developed nations by the way, our life expectancy if you have access to healthcare. If you have access to healthcare and the best healthcare, you can have better odds at extending your own existence. Yes. Thanks, science. Fucking cool. That's that's nuts. That's wild. Humans. Clean up your room. Yay, humans. We're, we're fucking... That's amazing. I can't believe we do this. I can't believe we do this collectively. We band together. We share information on a global network and scale. That's fucking beautiful. That's so cool. That's so wondrous. And it allows us to extend our own lives, the lives of our children. Wow. All right, so human beings can be pretty fucking badass. That is, that is pretty amazing. Well done, humanity. Why are there people who are trying to shit on this? <laughs> What about anything I just said do you want to shit on? <laughs> like, it's like, this is a marvel of the human experience that we can do all this. It requires so much work and coordination. And like, and you motherfuckers are willing to shit all over it. Just to make up nonsense, just to be like, oh, plastic causes trans people. I think, yeah, the gays are caused by chemicals in the water. <laughs> no. Please, ah, oh, the levels of foolishness. I can't take it. Such deeply unserious people have such massive platforms in this world. Who thinks Bill Gates wants to control us with microchips or that chemicals in the water are turning kids transgender? Yeah. And yes, RFK Jr. has said both of those things. I mean, set aside for a moment that Joe Rogan wouldn't even be a neutral moderator of such a debate. He's endorsed anti-vax nonsense many times before. Yep. But you just can't, in general, debate with conspiracists and loons. You can't debate whether up is down, hot is cold, black is white. They never change their minds, and they win just by you agreeing to share a platform with them. What's the expression? Never wrestle with a pig, you both get dirty, and the pig gets 40,000 new followers on Twitter. <laughs> now, <laughs> is, that, is that a proverb? I hadn't heard that before. That one's good. Oh, I agree generally here with Mehdi Hassan. The one thing I would maybe disagree on is that RFK Jr. already has a, a platform and a following. I mean, he is John Kennedy. John Kennedy's... Yeah, so he should, uh, like, debate Mehdi Hassan. That like a media personality who's who's going to have skill in that field because again it doesn't really truly matter at the end of the day uh, which person is technically correct for how it's going to influence people who watch it. This is a marketplace of ideas, so well packaged, sold, and refined ideas will do good in that marketplace for sure. It should not be fucking science. The scientists have already decided this, and they agree upon it, and they've demonstrated to us in real time that they were correct. You know, if someone's like, hey, uh, at night the sun is going to go down, and sometimes if there's a large amount of gray clouds above you, there could be rainfall. We can actually start to predict that rainfall. We can actually start to chart the years, the way constellations move, where suns, where the sun will be located, where, where you will notice different stars in the galaxy based on my predictions. And if it's true and accurate, then they were correct. So leave them be. Like leave, leave, let the scientists who are really good communicators, because we all we all love them. All right, we we need more Carl Sagan's in the world. But Carl Sagan doesn't have to fucking you know rise from the grave. Actually, he really should rise from the grave to go debate these motherfuckers. You know, <laughs> Joe Rogan. I feel that you were led astray by many a quack a doodle. But pending that, pending Carl Sagan rising from the grave and debating Joe Rogan. Leave them scientists alone. Let them keep doing the science. Let them do the science, and we should probably, you know, listen on the other side. Thank you. So this doesn't fall into the typical crank. This is someone who already is 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 a celebrity. But the difference here being, or the I should say the common thread being, Hell debating sings. these lunatics <laughs> yeah. legitima legitimizes both sides of the argument. Pretends that there is an equal yes. side to both. And this, this comes from someone who was so excited back in the day because I was an edgy little atheist boy, you know? And in my edgy little atheist boy phase, um, I was actually pretty pretty big into uh, the idea that I was going to watch Christopher Hitchens destroy every opponent that ever, you know, went within his path. Um, and then once Bill Nye was deba debating that creationist dude, the one who was like, got that giant amusement park, whatever that he built, like the, the recreation of the Ark, I, I was actually kind of excited for that. I was like, oh yeah, they're going to debate evolution. And I saw so many academics really mad about that. Like, like, so mad at Bill Nye because it was like, we've moved past this, Bill. You know that. 
and and I'm saying this as someone who adores Bill, but they, that was kind of the consensus. It was like, Bill, we've moved past this. We we already understand deeply how uh, evolution works, and, and we're learning more and more about it. And the more and more we learn, it's one of those things that just prove, proves itself to be more and more factually correct as we gather more information about the universe. So we don't need to debate the creationists on this one. And at the time, I was like, well, what about the creationists that could have their minds changed? What, what, what about them? Is there is there more danger in that? Because obviously this guy, Ken Ham, as Chad has pointed out correctly, he's got a monstrously huge platform of Christians. So how do we convert a handful of Christians into actually accepting evolution as a science? Even, like, I would be happy with in tandem of your own beliefs. You can believe that God created the universe and the earth, but instead of it being 5,000 years old, just accept that evolution goes over the course of billions, if not trillions of years, and it's something that we obviously have to, we have to Clean accept also as, as reality, right? When there isn't. One side has all. Ken Ham didn't have the brain power to build a roller coaster at his theme park. <laughs> was that something that was supposed to go through? But he was just having a rough one. Was he playing like roller coaster tycoon and just couldn't make it too far? Just bankrupting himself on a regular basis. <laughs> I want the loops. <laughs> the facts, all the data. The other side is just lying. And I'm going to get to more analysis of that in a, a bit here. But I do want to show you how this misinformation has worked. Trillions of years, the universe is 13 billion years old. You know right, I should have said that. Isn't it like 13.4? What's the age of the universe? Well, ask woke GPTP. What's the age of the universe? And explain how we know it in a 1980s hip hop track. Verse 1. Yo, let me drop some knowledge on the age of the universe. Listen up, I'll break it down. It's about to get diverse. In the 1980s, we got the science on track. Unraveling mysteries, no time to slack. The age of the universe, let's find the facts. Through science and research, no time to relax. From galaxies to cosmic rays, we explore. In this hip-hop track, we're gonna give you more. Step into the realm of astrophysics. Measurements and theories, no gimmicks or tricks. Scientists are like Hubble in the cosmic expansion. Unveiling truths about our celestial mansion. The age of the universe, let's find the facts. Through science and research, no time Time to relax. You've still given me no facts. You give me a lot of rhymes, but you're kind of, I feel like there's a lot of fucking preamble to this. From galaxies to cosmic rays, we explore. In this hip hop track, we're going to give you more. To know the age, we look back in time. Life from distant stars, a cosmic paradigm. Cosmic microwave background, a clue to unfold. In the afterglow of the Bing Bang, the story untold. The age of the universe, let's find the fact. Oh, the course again, okay. Okay, radiometric dating, a method precise. Isotopes decay, like rolling the dice. Here we go, elements and rocks, the key to our quest, determining ages we put to the test. In the 1980s, minds were set ablaze, unraveling the cosmos in a scientific craze. Through observations and mathematical deduction, we discovered the age. It's no mere seduction. So now we know the age of the universe found through science and... <laughs> you gotta skip down <laughs> the method. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask, how old is the universe and... How do we know that? And <laughs> write it in the style of ye old English. Hark, pray, lend me thine ear and hear the tale of the age of the universe. Let this truth prevail. <laughs> it's still doing hip hop. <laughs> through scientific pondering, tis revealed the universe age by which we are appealed. And through cosmic observation, grand and vast, we assume the secrets of a distant past, the ancient light, the heavens above, carry a message, a message, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, radiometric dating, uh, it seems to be it, as well as understanding uh, cosmic background radiation. You know, apparently you can pick up cosmic background radiation in uh, RF televisions. If you turn on an RF TV, that fuzz you see is 1% uh, of that fuzz is uh, remnants of the Big Bang. How that makes sense, I do not understand. I like, I love to hear it. I love uh, reading about it, and I love to see and be like. So when I look at that little fuzz on the RF television, one percent of that is the Big Bang. Cool. Which which one? Which dot? But like, because there's lots lots of different dots. Just, which 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 one of them is the, the Big Bang one? Because the rest are just normal dots, and they look identical. Okay, it'd be nice to know, you know. Worked to change. Yeah, this don't get dramatic. True, I should have. I've shared this before. In fact, I did a video on this clip because it was so You're on a stunning. Rabbit. But back during the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan was very pro-vaccine, to the point where they even mentioned in this clip, Peter Hotez. Yeah, so that's what we need to do today is just say this is going to be challenging. And we're going to get through it, though. We are going to get through it. I hope this wakes people up to the value of vaccines, too. There's so many wackos out there that think that vaccines 13 .8 are billion years. There you know, you go. a scam Thanks, no or they're dangerous. Or 13 .8. There, there's so many people something. out there that won't vaccinate their children. I know. And that's one, you know, one of your best shows you ever did was Peter Hotels. Yeah, He's a so dear friend of mine. He's a, I do, too. He's a dear friend of mine, as you. And, you know, he is one of the champions out there on this very issue. Yes. I couldn't agree what with do you more. Know? What do you know? There is Joe Rogan three years ago at the beginning of the pandemic. Not only being pro-vaccine, calling those who don't vaccinate wackos, but also saying he loves Peter Hotez. Wow. 
the very guy that he will now not have on his show alone. This clip shows you the power of propaganda. Oh, yeah. Clearly at Four some years point, worth. Rogan watched something or read something from some lunatic. Well, not just his guests. It's the same thing with all of them. Like, I don't have to wonder to myself too much as to why Tim Pool is so much more radicalized than he used to be like five years ago. Like five years ago, you wouldn't have a mass shooting, say, of like Club Q, of like a, a location where there is clearly a, a hate crime being committed. There is a, a slaughter of innocent LGBTQ plus people. And instead of even like being silent or doing thoughts and prayers, you jumped right to calling fucking uh, them hosting a groomer event, saying like, oh, you asked, they hosted a groomer event. What did you think was going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. Which is just like so callous and vile and you've dehumanized queer folk to such a degree that you could actually pull that off. But that wasn't like how the right was four or five years ago. There was there was a lot of right wingers who were just like, you kind of live and let live. Kind of like, ah, oh, well, I, I just stay away from the kids. Okay, stay away from the kids, stay away from the sports. Otherwise, yeah, whatever. You know, whatever else want to do in the, the privacy of their homes, not my, not my business, right? You know, just don't want big government. Don't, don't want all that kind of shit. That went to fucking this full-blown fascism. This full-blown fucking, like, the queers are degenerates and we got to make sure that we stop all these groomers and pedophiles immediately and they're trying to trans and gay your kids and we need to fucking do violent actions and this kind of stuff. Like, that, that was Tim Pool having a rotating carousel of a lot of white supremacists who surprise surprise overlap with a lot of transphobia uh, or vice versa you can get have full-blown fucking transphobes and they might have some very spicy takes about uh, you know just the criminal rates between black people and white people shit like that right it, they seem to go hand in hand these motherfuckers and when you are a, a host if you're Joe Rogan and you're having all these kind of people on on a regular basis one by one just kind of being like yeah, that vaccine I tell you seems a little sus you know seems a little sus kind of like have, have you heard of big pharma well they're quite big yeah, they're a pharma, and they're big at the same time, and they do some dubious things, I'm told. Yeah, so based on those dubious things, we should also highly suspect anything they do, and everything they do. Yeah, if it's mildly convenient for us. If it happens to be about the production of ivermectin, well, <laughs> then they're just kind of like a couple good old commies and socialists, just trying to give the people what they want, you know? This amazing prize-winning, award prize-winning drug for humans. Tick that... He, that, that then changed his mind, that he's now convinced of. And for anyone claiming, oh, Rogan's pretending to be anti-vax or something, Rogan uh, has a hundred million dollar Spotify deal. He doesn't yeah. have to, it doesn't matter how many views or listens he gets. It doesn't matter no, how I many No, I don't think he's he a grifter. I don't think he's a grifter. I, I think he's just like dangerous, <laughs> to be totally honest with you. <laughs> like, we didn't have a mechanism back in the day to do the same thing that we do with Joe Rogan today, which is that one person has, and this is why Glenn Greenwald loves bringing it up. He's just like, oh, yeah, you, this is why they want to crush independent media because it threatens, you know, the corporate oligarchy and all this kind of stuff. I was like, no, Spotify is uh, one of the largest, if not the largest streaming service. Music, maybe they're competitors with Apple or maybe someone else has a larger share of the market, but they certainly have one of the largest shareholds. So this is a monstrously huge multinational corporation. There's no question about that. And yeah, so they own Joe Rogan, but part of their thing is they don't want to censor Joe Rogan too much. They don't want to actually fucking be the people who police Joe Rogan constantly. So they've taken a big step back. And in that big step back now, they're kind of just straight up letting them do whatever he wants. And that's really dangerous because you've got one person who's the editor. Like before, if, if you had a Walter Cronkite who just suddenly went through some wild, I don't know, phrenology phase, at least you would be able to have a series of peers or an editor or something that was, well, I guess around his time, that probably wouldn't have wouldn't have been the most controversial take that anyone could have had uh, for a white dude. Um, but either way, if you had that today, if you had, if you had a, say Jake Chapper went on a white supremacist rant, right? Uh, all of a sudden, there would probably be some checks and balances to be like, whoa, okay, you got to be held accountable for this. Uh, you're either going to be suspended, suspended without pay for a little while, you might... Uh, uh, have contract renegotiation, you might get fired from the network, all that kind of stuff. There is none of that for Joe. Joe is the podcast. We have the technology to run an entire show just from uh, the, the comfort of our home, right? Because he's got this 11 million viewer audience, if he's not held accountable by the very corporation that owns the brand, which they're kind of just like, fuck it, then yeah, he can say whatever he wants. <laughs> he can put whatever information he wants to, to 11 million, again, a country. It's, it's, it's again a country gets to listen to Joe Rogan uh, when he doesn't understand something related to science. It's, it's oh, fucking think how awesome. different the situation would be in the world right now. Thank you for what you do say about vaccines because people listen to you and we need every positive voice because we have so many crazy voices out there right now so that are so 
paranoid and yeah. de de delusional, and they want it all to be a conspiracy. There's been an amazing medical innovation in in human culture, and that's vaccines. It's amazing what it's done. And ha have there been adverse effects on people? Of course, everything. Everything that people do, there's some people that are going to react in a bad way. It doesn't mean it's not a positive thing. It is just incredible to see the transformation. That Rogan is the perfect example of why you do not platform lunatics. And now Rogan himself is calling for a debate with a scientist and a lunatic. A few things to end on here. Uh, just to give credit, because I didn't mention it earlier, Michael Osterholm is the um, other person in that Rogan clip that uh, you just watched. And that was actually... I remember watching that episode because we we're talking this at the beginning of the pandemic. Rogan has on his actual expert to discuss vaccines and what may happen, uh, you know, with COVID. And that was a great, it was, it was a very informative discussion. And since then, Rogan's show completely uh, downhill. Now, some last things. So on the uh, debate question here. So this is uh, Dr. David Robert Grimes writing for anti-vaccine activists. Doesn't matter if they lose debate, they still win by virtue of getting false legitimacy and amplifying their message. Years ago, I made the mistake of debating vaccine crank Andrew Wakefield. Didn't matter that I showed his lies. He got the platform he craved. And uh, Grimes has a larger article here discussing what he calls false balance. This is what... I've criticized the media for doing for, for years. CNN, terrible at this. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the topic of uh, climate change, for example, which he goes into this, this is largely focused on climate change in the BBC. But climate change for years was communicated as this, this debate between the climate science or the facts and yep. people who don't believe the facts. Yep. Platforming the bullshit anti-climate change people as just as legitimate to believe as the actual climate science, which set us back, you know, decades in terms of being able to actually do anything about this. So I'll link to his piece below. Last thing here, uh, Peter Hotez has a book coming out on this very thing. So to understand how the anti-vaccine movement became a well-financed, organized lethal force during the pandemic and its immediate aftermath, my latest book out soon. The Deadly Rise of Anti-Science and Warning. So I will link to this below. It'd be nice if uh, he seems Peter nice. Hotez gets to discuss his book on Rogan's show. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> Too many news sites for zero journalists. Well, not only that, like it sucks at this point because like there has been a complete eradication and faith in mainstream like you know news publication you name it like even as uh, you know fox news still gets really high viewership the general public and their understanding like they despise corporate news so a lot of them have turned to online media personalities podcasters youtubers uh, twitch streamers you name it and uh, you know he says as he is one um I still depend if I'm doing a story on anything, so this keeps falling down, but I still depend if I'm doing a story on anything to have actual real journalists because I'm just a fucking entertainer opinion piece on the internet. I require real journalists, real scientists, and obviously you chats to keep me uh, informed on a regular basis. But uh, on a real note, you need the real journalists. Without legacy journalists, people who are actually willing to do investigative journalism, find out facts, uh, deep dives, what the fuck are streamers going to be? We're just gonna be a whole bunch of fucking jabronis being like, all right, so what am I reacting to today? Look at this one, it's, it's a reaction of a reaction. This has got me and David Dole together. We're, we're reacting right now, look at that, we're having fun. Uh, this is this is news. You're watching news here on The Surfs. Proud to bring you the truest news stories every single day. I can talk like this and then it sounds more authentic, doesn't it? We'll continue. Rogan has surprised me at times, so. Maybe he'll change his mind and have Peter on again by himself to discuss this. But in terms of the debate, just the last thing on this. Okay. Debates are only effective if you are really good at debating. A scientist whose life's work is Science. creating these you know, <laughs> patent-free vaccines, as the latest example here with Peter Hotez, he doesn't study, you know, debate prep or, or how to debate day in, day out, so, like someone like uh, Mehdi Hassan does. So that isn't his job. Meanwhile, you have a complete crank who, this is what he's done. He debates 
anti-vax yep. garbage. Yep. You're not. Well, that's so white and male. Therefore, so credible. Yes. Also, cis. Yeah. And mostly straight. Pretend I'm completely straight. That way I can have complete and utter credibility. Yes. Fully straight now. Super the right straight. side, the, the correct side of an argument, often does not win the debate. Because the winner of a debate is not dictated by the facts. It is dictated by performance. If you are better at performing, if you are more charismatic, right and if you are better passing. at delivering your points, you are often viewed as the winner of a debate, even if you are oh, yeah. wrong. So I wouldn't mind seeing somebody who is... Like, he's a massive piece of shit, but I think Destiny has a debate where he debated, like, just for sport, uh, a fucking flat earther or something. One of those people, you know, people who are just, like, so far out into the moon. And, well, no, he debated from the position as as of, uh, if he was a flat earther to debating a scientist, as he's not one, but just to flex, like, if you are. And that's the shitty thing about it. Again, it's it's the marketplace of ideas. It's It's a marketplace. That's what I keep saying. If you think Joe Rogan is credible, this bizarre clip of him yelling at a scientist will probably change your mind. Podcaster Joe Rogan is once again in the news for being anti-science and even ha having a quick perusal of his past statements shows that this isn't exactly the first time. This week, hundreds of medical experts signed an open letter condemning Rogan and Spotify, the streaming company that owns the exclusive rights to his podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience, for spreading misinformation on his uber-popular show since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Rogan has insisted on inviting problematic guests to his show and spewing his own vile rhetoric long before 2020, blah, blah, blah. A recently resurfaced clip of Rogan absolutely losing it on a primologist, however, throws water onto that theory in a much way the scientific facts tend to squash the misguided nonsense he and his guests often spell on the show. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm a primatologist. There's no such thing as a as a bondo ape. You're a fucking idiot. Go online and look it up. You're a what? What do you do? It's a new discovery. You're a primatologist. Well, look it up. You're not current. <laughs> Pay attention. Go online and look it up. Um, yeah, this is true. Yeah, you've learned some shit from the call. When did you graduate? <laughs> I have a PhD. From when 2000. did you graduate? When? <laughs> from 2000. Yeah, when was the last time you got online and researched primates? <laughs> Have you ever looked at all, any of the new discoveries? Right. See, see, this is what it would be like. This would, so someone on the other end is like, oh, actually, this is my field of expertise. I have a PhD in this. And no, you're actually factually incorrect right now. That's what the broad consensus of the medical community would say to you if any of us had an opportunity to, as I do right now. So here I am, and we're having a conversation. Say, like, well, what? You know, it's, it's new. This shit is new, bitch. You know what's going on? Come on. No, what? Do you, do you know about the primates? Huh? Yeah, you don't know shit. What, you got a PhD in my ass? Did any of Carl Amon's work? Yeah, I've been asking. What are you laughing at? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? I'll tell you why you're laughing, because you don't have a point. So you're trying to, oh, you're ridiculous. That's rid I have a PhD. Meanwhile, there's all sorts of photographs of this, this primate. <laughs> I was doing a bit there, but I, we're kind of overlapping with one another. You know, there's only, there's only so much I can exaggerate reality. <laughs> Gigantic chimpanzee. Not only that, it's on National Geographic, stupid. National Geographic. <laughs> Dum dum, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> .com. CNN dot com, stupid. No, 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 no. There's bones. There's tissue samples. There's hair. There's fecal matter. There's all sorts of different things. There's fecal matter. They've mapped the DNA of this animal already. <laughs> I'm a primatologist. Primatologist, what? What do you have? You got a PhD or something? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, please, stupid! <laughs> After spending roughly five minutes going off about how a now debunked pseudoscientific theory of the quote Bondo ape, a purported Congolese super ape, <laughs> that supposedly could walk upright like a human and was hyper aggressive, Rogan took a call from a Florian primatologist who identified herself only as Allison. She encountered that there's no such thing as the Bondo ape, but before she could even finish her sentence, the host was jumping down her throat, calling her a fucking idiot. And <laughs> the PhD scientist should go online and look it up. <laughs> You're so stupid. They have poo. <laughs> haven't paid attention to it at all. These are legitimate scientists and primatologists that are in the Congo studying this thing. And you don't know. Yet you're calling up. You've done zero research on this. You haven't looked into it at all. You're telling me we know all the animals that are in the world? Are you telling me we know all the animals in this gigantic, several thousand mile long, intense rainforest? <laughs> this story gets even better. The Billy Apes, or Bondo Mystery Apes, were the names given to 2003 in a sensational report in popular media to a purportedly new species of highly aggressive giant apes supposedly inhabiting the wetlands of the savanna. Scientists soon determined that they were just common chimpanzees. <laughs> <laughs> And this, this is why I love science. 
This is this is why science is beautiful and an amazing thing, uh, and why should we should trust it. <laughs> what about the Bondo apes, the super apes? They're highly aggressive. We have stool. We have stool, I tell you. We've mapped that out. There's another fake chimpanzee out No, it's not a fake, stupid. It's, it's not a fake. Listen, they have skulls. Listen to me. They have skulls. <laughs> chimpanzees. <laughs> They have hair, they have fecal samples, they have photographs, they have a dead one. Okay? Yeah. Bye. Oh, so good. Not fringe. CNN, okay? National Geographic, all these different legitimate scientific resources. Go look it up. Primologists, Bye. better ones. You'd like to prove that, wouldn't you? Get to the National Geographic. Silly, listen to her. Oh, I have a PhD. See, why do people argue about something that haven't looked into it all? Why wouldn't she, as a primatologist, go, whoa, for real? Let me look into that. Holy shit. Well, well, that makes sense. I mean, how could they possibly... Wait, this is... No, it's not AI. No, this is not AI. This is just old. No, yeah, this is real. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> yeah, someone sent this to me in the morning, and I was like, oh my god, holy shit, Joe Rogan did this back in the day. Yeah, no, he, like, come on, the guy's a massive conspiracy theorist, okay? He was, like, he was into a lot of different conspiracy theories, and, like, he bought into some more than others, and obviously there's some he goes down deep. And this one is obviously one in which, like, there's, there was, uh, according to the Wikipedia article, some mainstream attention initially, initially, because it, it is an observation at first that they thought that they had discovered potentially a new kind of ape. Uh, and then once they did DNA testing, and they did a bunch of research, to realize they were just another common form of chimpanzees but that was a story for a while the thing is it's just wild to have someone who is a phd expert primatologist call into a show try to discuss this with him and be like and all she got in sideways was like there's actually no such thing as the bondo ape which is factually correct she was correct but it's just wild to see him just go off the fucking deep end over we it we know all the primates i mean couldn't there possibly be another one but no. <laughs> where was she from uh, florida florida and <laughs> that's Bit of an L here, Bill Barr. Don't worry, you're taking lots of W's lately, all right? You've been, your stocks have been rising very strong, very far, so don't worry. I know you got a lot of, you got a couple of L's in your past. He's got some transphobic shit in his past, some pretty shitty transphobic like routines and stuff, but he's gotten so much better on those topics. See, that's better. It's better to have a comedian doing that, like going on the up, you know, the stock's going up, than fucking like a Dave Chappelle that's like one of the goats, and then all of a sudden the fucking, the stocks are just in free fall right now because the guy is just going full transphobia. So go in the opposite direction. Back in reality, of course, the Bondo, or quote, Billy Ape Theory, debunked in the early 2000s when scientists discovered via DNA tests that the species actually belonged to the common chimpanzee. The credibility of the Bondo Ape, in other words, lies somewhere between Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. To your credit, the primal, uh, primatologist fought valiantly in the face of Rogan's childish decision uh, or derision to really call her stupid and suggested that she was simply behind the times, citing dubious research to back up the claims. At the end of the segment, after the primatologist was disconnected, Rogan continued to make fun of her, including mocking her having a vagina. A preposterously sex- oh, let me hear that part. And she has a vagina. Somewhere in Florida there. She's done. Yeah, opinion discounted. Vagina. <laughs> Coming up to live where hurricanes hit. Alright, listen, we're gonna we're gonna take another break. Right. We're yeah, sorry, Bill Burr. I, I get to mix up all the time. For the victims of Hurricane Katrina when we Wouldn't get back. I want to hear that. I'm a primatologist. <laughs> Those primatologist. are fringe sites. Like National Geographic is a fucking fringe site. CNN is a fucking fringe site. Oh my site. god. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. Chill. Holy shit. Holy shit. This is the dude that you never want to drink with because they always get this way after like three beers, you know, and it's always so shitty. It's always like, you're you're like a half decent guy until you get to that third beer. And at that point, like no one wants to talk to you. I don't want to spend time with you. No, you just get so aggressive, bro. Chill the fuck out. You don't need to be grabbing me by the collar right now while we're having a conversation. This is not this is not normal, right? Like this this is not pleasant for for me. Is it pleasant for you? Did you is this a pleasant action to speak to someone like this? I think not. Do you enjoy the surfs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. Thank you kindly to our Lord and Saviors, Peyton L. Just and Xander Corvus. Without you, we are nothing. And now, a shout out to our Knights of the Square table. Amazing Flesh, Anna Loves Riley, Adrian McCarthy, DM Rivera, Doug Cady, Everything Important, Hegbard Celine, Izzy Solidarity, La Media Panza, Matthew Scarborough, Multimondi, Nettle, Omni, Peanut Butter Blonde, Political Papi, Quiet 185, Rachel K, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, K 
Kubi, Cernicus, Spinach Monster, Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demmel, Thomas, Trevbot EXE, Lucidry, Words Greenwood, Shell Alvarez, Tony Perkins, Thomas, Opecker, Travis McClinton, and Victoria Bell. Thank you so much. And a huge shout out to all the other people who make this entire show possible. Without you, it would not exist. If you can support us, please go to patreon.com slash the surfs and even $1 can help unlock all of the little goodies and help make this show entirely possible. 